of stealing. Spirit of stealing. Spirit of stealing. You always take what does not belong to you. Be careful. I say you always take what does not belong to you. Yes, I do. I'm not living in your house, but this is spirit of stealing. Yes. And every week it starts small. Yes. Before you eat, you join gangs. And that will be the end of your life. Okay? Yes, sir. So let's listen. We have lots of lessons to learn, especially youths. Let's listen to this experience. Elohim. My name is uh, Bonaventure Madaki. And the person standing next to me is my uncle. Um, I came to Abuja on Friday last week with my mom on a visit to my uncle, not knowing I was coming to the house of God. But on reaching the house of God, I received a prophecy from the man of God, wise man Daniel, which was very true, that I had the spirit of stealing. Way back my secondary school age, I've been in attitude of stealing, either from my teachers, my classmates, and just all this stealing is just to satisfy my, my friends. Because normally when we go out, I don't have money. So I will definitely go and look for a way to get money. So anytime I see anything valuable, which is not mine, I pick it and sell it, actually, just to get money. And when I get the money, I go out, drink, club, and so many things involved. But after the prophecy, there's this guilt in me that went out that day that I felt. I've not felt that peace in me ever. Because every time I sit down alone and think, I normally find it difficult to think about anything peaceful or good. I do, f I do feel as if people are pushing me or people have been saying things about me. So definitely I know I've, st I've stolen m most things and definitely they have not caught me before. So I've been having this guilt in me that, ah. Let, 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 me, let me help the situation. He is full of... Um, or transition, but you don't know how to pour it out. You know, this heart is very powerful, the conscience. Romans 9 verse 1 says, if your conscience does not condemn you, you are justified before God. When you are in the habit of taking things, stealing things that does not belong to you, anywhere you find yourself, you feel that they are chasing you. If you stand, you want to look at your back and see whether uh, police are coming. You want to see whether they are coming to arrest you. If they say, ah, they are looking for a thief, you'll be shocked. That's the restlessness you have all the rest of your life. And those who are in the habit of stealing or robbing things that does not belong to them, they don't have a permanent house. You can't say this is their residence. They always lodge in a hotel or look for a temporary place to stay so that when they hear that, hey, off they go. What kind of life is that? That's the kind of life they live. And that thing has started in him. If not this prophecy, will have graduated into having gone. That's when he say he cannot, he cannot, once they are sitting down like this, they can never have peace. You they hear the sound of someone on the floor. When you now say, oh, God, what's up? Don't worry, don't worry. They know what they are going through because fear, every second, fear, fear, fear. Those have stolen their property, they are looking for me. Those have robbed their house, those have robbed their trees, they are looking for me. They can never have rest of mind. That's what he was trying to say. Uh -huh. And on Sunday, on reaching the church, I was having this thought in me that on how I sit down in the church, I will definitely see a valuable thing to pick. Yeah? Wait. <laughs> okay, when you came here last Sunday, yes. you also had a mind to steal. Yes, that was what was in my mind. Can you imagine? God is great. God is great. God is great. God is great. 
Imagine as he entered here, he was able to go free by taking things. He can never believe God again. He had it in mind as he was sitting there, he was looking for handsets. You know, they know very well the expensive one. They're looking for the one that is very expensive. They see the one that, you know, there are some handsets that even when you offer it, you continue to ring. <laughs> You can never pick that one because you know that one is, is not uh, expensive. You know, there are some handsets. When you off it, even when you remove the battery, the sensor is still there. It's just, grrr, grrr. They cannot carry that one. You, look, you know the one you're looking for. But God said no. And God pointed him out. God is great. God is great. I say it again. I had... I had a feeling in me that when I reach here, I'm going to find something valuable to pick. But after the prophecy, I don't even think about stealing again. Clap for Jesus Christ. Clap for Jesus Christ. Wow. You mean that urge to pick something that does not belong to you is has gone? It has gone. How do you feel within you now? Very, very peaceful. I praise the Lord. Thank you. Wow. Thank Give me you. a hug. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for appreciating my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Now, as a youth, you are in the best position to advise youth like us. What word of advice do you have for us? I have nothing much to say. Just that we youth, we do see valuable things as something which is... How will I even put it? There is this English they do use. I go see better thing. I go pick and mark, sell and mark, get more money. No. That's not how it's supposed to be. We are just supposed to praise God. We are the future of this country. We are the future. We have to just stay good. We have to be blessed. We have to be... We have to, be, we have to just be, be good. We have to just be good citizens. That's just how it's supposed to be. Not that we see things and pick. We thank God. You heard it all. It's also talking to me, but I'm one of the youths of this nation. We are the leaders of this nation. If the nation goes bad tomorrow, it's our fault. And if the nation goes good tomorrow, it's our fault. Therefore, before you do anything wrong, think of the future of your nation. That's what he's saying. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's hear from your uncle. Elohim. My name is Solomon Chen. This is my elder sister's son. Um, the, the parents have actually been complaining to me for years about his attitude. In fact, um, uh, his, the kind of friends he keeps, his negligence to school, because when, after his secondary school, they sent him down to, uh, they got him admission in the polytechnic. On getting to the school, the whole school fees, everything they bought for him, he sold it off and moved with some of his friends off the campus and was living off the campus and lying to his parents that he was in school. Two years later, there was no certificate to present to the parent. This attitude continued on and on, and it has always been the, uh, as a result of the kind of friends he keep. Because I remembered on the 1st of January this year, 2021, uh, very early in the morning, he came out, um, yes, okay, I think it was toward evening, he came out, just picked the car in the house, left with his friends, on his way out with them, he knocked down a man on a bike, and the man died instantly. And he wasn't having a driving license. So the whole family had to pass through hell to get him out of the police net, the court, and on and on and on like that. Because we just couldn't let him go and rot in the prison. He's our son. We still love him irrespective of what has possessed him. So, on uh, last two weeks, I got in touch, they live in Jos, I live in Abuja here. 
So last two weeks, I got in touch with the father and the mother, and I said, please, oh, there is one very mighty favor that God has done to us in Abuja here. By sending down... By sending down his son, Wiseman Daniel, to us here. And... To me, I, I strongly believe God that the coming of the man of God to Abuja here will put an end to all my family problem, all my problem in life, only if I stay close to God and make God's word the standard for my life. So oh, I got in sorry. touch. I love your statement. Clap for Jesus Christ once again. I was, I was thinking I was going to say is the only way I can maintain my relationship with God is when I continue to stay in Elohim ministry. As if it's the only living church. No. We are not fighting for membership. Because your membership in your local church is merely symbolic. Every Sunday, this, this gathering is just to remind you that there is someone to be worshipped and adored. Who guided you throughout Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? You are only there to say thank you, Jesus Christ. That is all. The building cannot take you to heaven. Take note of that. If we know about this, we will stop shouting, Hey, come here, come here. This only place, this only place. Ha! Who told you that? The person you are worshipping is in the heart. It does not stay in the building. If you know that the person you are worshipping does not stay in the building, you will be very careful of looking for, Hey, hey come here, come here, come here. No! Your membership in your local church is merely symbolic. What counts is Christ in you, the hope of glory. On the last day, God will not ask you, did you worship in Elohim ministry? No. It's, not, it's impossible. He will not ask you, did you worship in that church or that church or that church? No. The question will be, did you worship me in spirit and in truth? That's all. So thank you very much. Thank you. So, I called on the parents to bring him down to Abuja so we can attend service. And I know that the light of God will locate the root of that particular problem. So, the mother now said, but he doesn't go to church. In fact, she can't remember when last he had ever followed the family to church. So, how will she tell him that they are coming down to Abuja to attend church service. So she decided on her own to tell him that they are coming down to visit me. So he was, okay, fine. He wants to go and visit me. So on coming down here, I said, young man, we have to go to church. Today is Sunday. So um, we all are going to church. And I will not leave you in my house when you won't join us to church. So he has no option than to follow us. No, so, no, let me help you. <laughs> the reason why you say you're not living in the house was because you look at your TV, 200,000. <laughs> you look at your shoe, 50,000. Ha! Look at your fridge, 150,000. Ha! <laughs> you say, oh God, I was. <laughs> I cannot live here. You spoke in Paris, visit it. <laughs> because it's not easy to buy a TV of 200,000. Thank God. So, but, but now you can be confident to leave him in the house. Yeah, very, very well. Very now well. For Jesus Christ. No, in fact, um, after his deliverance on Sunday, I went to work, and then my wife also went out. So he was at home. I think the, okay, the little kid also went to school, so he was at home alone. And we came back and met him, and everything was intact. <laughs> but when you were going, you were praying, I hope this deliverance is permanent. <laughs> I'm sure you were praying in your heart, I hope this deliverance is permanent. Yeah? Your heart were, were very high, up, up, until you came back and saw. I, I know before you even asked of him, you look at the TV, it's still there. Fridge is there. Ah, uh, say. 
Lord, thank you. <laughs> that is it. That is it. So now the confidence is there because it's a new creation in Christ Jesus. Wow. Okay, let's hear from you. So, um, and um, much more again, I, I discovered that when we wake up in the morning for money devotion, before I even put myself together, he has woken up and tried to put the other kids and they start the prayers. Well, this, this is what he had never done before in wow. his entire Clap life. for Jesus Christ. Hey, this, this, uh, this is another Saul who became poor. Wow, that is God for you. 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 And mind you, Satan will not look for somebody who has no bright future to destroy. Take note of that language. Satan will not want to destroy somebody who does not have a bright future, who has not come to make a difference in his world. For Satan to torment him to that level in the past shows that he's creative to make a difference in his world. If you continue this way, write it down. You will soon hear his name all over the world. Because Satan has seen that bright star. That's why he wants to destroy it. But we thank God. So, I, I continue to observe him carefully. Um, unlike in the past, when he goes out to, you know, uh, clean, wash the car in the house in the morning, as usual, everybody's uh, dom uh, dom uh, chores in the house. You know, as usual, he will put on the car music, the stereo, loud music, and in less than 10 minutes, you see all the boys surrounding him and you know doing their things but it has not been like that and i i have tried to also like try to draw him close to talk to him to let him understand that those friends are the ones were the ones in the past leading him to those things and uh, he should try as much as he can to stay away from them and this time around choose his friends because you know, show me your friends and I will show you who you are. So, I have been spending a lot of time talking to him and I really thank God that he takes his time to listen to me and respond positively. And even when I talk to him about, uh, you know, the handset, in the past, at night, he will spend the whole night on his phone. I wonder what he's actually doing on the phone. But, I mean, this time around, it has been a different thing. And um, I, I just pray that God will give me the wisdom to lead him to the right things that will take him away so that he will not be tempted to, um, into going back to that attitude. Because I know his friends are still there. Both in school, out there, they are all over our streets, they are all there. And they will definitely find a way to still want to get back to him. But I just pray God will help me to get him involved into something that yes. will take away his heart. <clears throat> you have said it all. After he delivered the environment, he found himself also matters. But the environment he found himself is a godly one. So the, the foundation will continue there. Okay, after the service, I will see him. I also cancel him. As a young man will talk, I cancel him. Because the environment matters. If you are delivered from smoking and you still find yourself in the midst of smokers, one day you continue to smoke. But after he's delivered, he find himself in a place where you are, godly home. Every morning you wake up and pray. That thought will not be there. So I will talk to him as well. So concerning his handset, I will advise him on that. Handset is good. It depends on what you are looking for. If you are looking for good, then it's good. If you are looking for bad, then it's bad. So we will not say because you decide to allow it to destroy you, therefore it's bad. No. It has advantages. So also it has disadvantages. It depends on what you're looking for. I have handset, and I use it for the glory of God. So if you have yours, I use it for the glory of God. It's as good as that. So thank you very much. Now, finally, sir, what word of advice do you have for parents, especially um, people watching you all over the world? My word of advice is, please, parents all over the whole world, don't give up on your children. Whatever attitude or lifestyle that you see them exhibiting that is not godly, I want you to take it to heart that 
it, has, it is Satan that has possessed their body. And your role as parents is not only to provide them their financial needs or their educational needs alone, but your main role as parents is to ensure that you give them the right necessary spiritual coverage. That one comes, to me, it comes even first before any other thing. Before your clothing, your feeding, and any other thing. First of all, your spiritual life. I need to get you to where you can receive the Spirit of God in your heart. Because even if I, prov I take you to the best school in the world, you end up becoming a drug addict, an arm robber, and whatever, whatever you, the devil wants to use you no, for. No, no. Put it right. Taking someone to the best school in the world is not a disadvantage at all. It depends on who you are taking to that best school and the mindset of the person you are taking to that best school. The orientation the person has and what the person is looking for. It's a matter of mindset. There are people who went to the best school and they became number one in their own world. There are also people who went to the best school and they are otherwise. Your mindset matters. Who, is, who are you taking to that school? What's the mindset of that person? about education and what kind of friends does the person keep at least before you send your child to the best school in the whole world you must have known the status of that child character wise at home uh -huh. is it the type that will go and lavish your money or the type that will go on if the type that will go on go on go on maintaining your name and the integrity of the family please it's a good thing but when you look at the way you say hey ha ha hey 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 hey, hey, hey. be careful <laughs> that's that is it so that is it. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's you, sir? Come. Your uncle. You, yes. Your uncle. I say your uncle. Your uncle. Uncle. Yeah. You don't know the difference between uncle and leg and knee. I say your uncle is your right uncle is giving you concern. Yes. Eh? From here, like this. I say, your right uncle is giving you concern. Yes. Healing from ankle pain. Coming through a word of prophecy. As the man of God is locating serious cases in the congregation. I'm just, I'm just looking at those that case. Let me size it. Can we put our hands beautifully for Jesus? So let's listen to him. Okay, your name and your testimony, sir. My name is David Peter. Elohim. Yes, the prophecy you just watched the replay, it was true. When the man of God said, my uncle, why I was confused, pointing here, all over me. There was a time I had a dream, and I was shot from my head here. Then, since then, I begin to have pain all this my side down to that my uncle he complained of pain all the time after three days man of god visited me in my dream and he ministered the heaven dew on that my spot in the dream let me let me explain this so that we understand how this visitation in the dream happens so you don't think that i, I used to go to it <laughs> Please uh, save me. I'm not the one. <laughs> Let me explain to you. With due respect, come, sir. Just face the people. You see, this our gentle brother here, with due respect, if he's the apple of God's eye, God has a way of advertising to, to the whole world. You know, let me just use this simple language to explain it, which you understand. You know, you are used to mas uh, masquerade. You know, the person carrying the masquerade is not the real person. It's the face you see is not the real person until you remove the masquerade. That is the negative side. In the positive side, if this is, he is an anointed man of God and God wants to shoot him to the whole world, he can be here in Nigeria, 
and Jesus will use his face to appear to people in London, America, Germany to be doing healing. So the man of God too should know that he's not the one who Jesus is the one doing the work. I hope you understand. So what he's saying now is that he say he saw me. I'm not the one. God just used my appearance to promote his work. That is just the way. So, man of God appeared. No. 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 He's not the one appearing, but Jesus is the one appearing. So, but Jesus just wants to use his own face to promote the work he's doing through him. So, take note of that. Jesus appeared to me through the man of God. That should be the right language. So, thank you, sir. Thank you. So, that day that I was in the church, when he said, your uncle, your uncle, as soon as I came out and he prayed for me, he stepped into that my right hand uh, leg. If you, if you watch the creep after that, you see how I was vibrating, vibrating heavily. I couldn't control myself until after some time when the, the thing released me. Uh, we were taken to his office. While we were in the office again, he laid a hand. I vibrated again. To the glory of God, as I went to home, before I can bend this my toe, once I bend it like this, if I don't take it back, there's no way I can take it back. But when I tried it, I can see I fold the leg and I raise it back again. The pain, everything disappeared. And I said, ah, God. What, what a God. Then I was gifted this, uh, uh, the money due again. I usually have this dream. I'd be in the pit, struggling to come out. No way. Okay, uh, no, you have to take it easy and explain. When you are giving this due from heaven, what did you do when you got home with it? Because, you know, I told you, if you remember vividly, two Sundays ago, I made you to understand that God had doubled the anointing on this due. You will see, by the time the one that is coming this 31st all night comes out, you will know that God is great. Uh -huh. What did you do? You can't, it, what happened when you took it home? Explain before the, the revelation you had. Uh -huh. When I was giving this heaven due, I went home and I bathed, I prayed with it, and I ministered it on my body. That whatever that is not of God in me be cast out. After, after some time, I slept off. I saw myself again inside a pit. I said, ah, this pit again. Why people were standing out there watching? Okay, can you, before you, you, you talk about what happened with this, you after ministering it, can you tell us the kind of dream you normally have in the past? And what normally happens when you have those dreams? And let us now relate you with what you want to say now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Usually before I minister this thing, my dreams, I usually be inside, I've seen myself inside a pit, struggling to come out. Maybe towards out, I will get something to hold. That thing will pull again, I will fall back to the pit. Sometimes I'll see myself on top of a bridge, trying to cross to the other end. Along the way, the bridge will collapse. I'll be hanging there, struggling to come out. This has been my experience in my dreams, all this why. For years. And I do complain to my younger ones. These are what my experiences is. But to the glory of God, that day that I was given this heaven due, and I ministered it. I think I left here, uh, maybe within, within two hours I get to my place, bath. Minister, it was not night, oh. I slept off. I saw myself inside pit. People were gathering, seeing what would happen. Then I saw myself clamping with speed. Uh, the people outside there were say, shouting, It's coming out, oh. It's coming out, oh. The next thing I heard that thing, and I turned. I said, Thank you, Jesus. And I saw myself on the floor. I said, ah. I was I dreaming. Since then, that has been the end of the dream. You see, it is very simple 
to move in line with the principle of Jesus Christ and be blessed of him. Whatever that is touched by someone enjoying the grace of God has been touched in heaven and it can become God's representative for healing, deliverance, blessing, breakthrough, and salvation. Such is the case with this dew from heaven. Once you minister it, and you have to take note of that amazing power of prayer point. What we don't understand is that you must be in a proper place before you ask for what you want. That's the duty of that amazing power of prayer point. To usher you to God's bedroom, where you now use this dew to destroy the kingdom of darkness around you. Is that somebody who wants to demand something from a president? You have to be in the president's office. You have to be invited. So, so before you ask for your healing, for your deliverance, for your blessing, you must be ushered to God's bedroom. Any moment from now, we'll be ushered to God's bedroom, where you see things happening. You know that it's not this boy, but somebody has occupied that room to do his work. So, the essence of that amazing power of prayer point is to usher you to God's bedroom, where you can now use the dew to authorize, declare, bind, and lose. So thank you very much. How is the leg now? I don't have any pain there. No any sign again. I can fold the legs without any pain. Before, if I fold it like this, I also use my hand again to bring it up. Thank but you. now, I can fold the leg. No pain. Now. What, what, is, what is the meaning of coming out of the pit? Coming out of the pit means all the lost glory will be restored. Breakthrough will start immediately. Success will start. But when someone is in that pit, everything covers it. Coming out of the pit this time, through the dew from heaven, has opened his breakthrough. Congratulations, sir. And finally, what word of advice do you have for all who are listening to you? Yes. My word of advice to viewers all over the world, there is nothing God cannot do. It's for you to believe. All the Bible said we should just believe and believe in his prophet and we shall prosper. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Pray against arthritis. Pray against arthritis. It's happened to your mom in the past. I say it happened to your mom in the past. Yes. I can see. That's why when you walk a little distance, your knee buckles. Yes. Walk a little distance, your knee buckles. Yes. Very the mighty Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Madam, we welcome you to the Everlasting Light of Hope International Ministries today in Jesus' name. Amen. Please tell us your name and your wonderful testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elohim. My name is Ujata Lucy Sunday. I'm here to testify to the glory of God. Last Sunday, I was here on the prayer line. And the man of God prophesied for me that I'm, I should pray against arthritis. That my mother suffered for, from arthritis, which I confirmed to be true. You know, before I come, before I come to this place, Every time I'll be feeling heaviness on my body. At times when we are going out with my friends, when they are walking, I'll be at the back. At times I'll be telling them to wait for me. Even last Sunday when we were coming, I told my sister that we came together that she should wait for me first. And she wait for me before we came to this place. Even in my department, in my church, when we stand for long, I cannot, I will sit down. 
Even my MD used to quarrel me for hey. that. But to the glory of God, ever since I left here last Sunday, I feel light in me. I can do what I cannot do. Even this morning. Hallelujah. Go ahead, madam. Hallelujah. Even this morning, I was walking uh, through, uh, on this step case. And I was asking myself, I said, is it me? Because I can, if I walk small, I used to wait and rest before I continue. But to the glory of God, God healed me. I'm here to give God the glory. And the God have done this one. I know that you will settle me all round and you give me all round breakthrough and I'll come here to testify to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us put our hands beauty together beautifully for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, we have listened to our sister. She was at the prayer line section last week, Sunday. And during the, the prayer line, the man of God prophesied to her that she should pray against arthritis. And that that happened to her mother before. And then when she's walking, she usually feels fatigued and tired. Can you confirm exactly how you were feeling before that message of prophecy? Can you tell us exactly your states, how you were feeling to confirm what the man of God said? I used to feel heaviness. If I do something little, I used to get tired. And when I'm working with people, I used to be at the back. But today, to the glory of God, when we were coming here, I was at the front. I'm here to give God the glory. The God of Elohim. Hallelujah. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. Yes. He, during the prophecy, the man of God also made mention and said, your mom had arthritis in the past. Can you confirm that to be true? Yes, it's true. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Now, for what God Almighty has done in your life, setting you free, exposing the root cause of your problem, delivering you and healing you, what is your promise to Jesus and your advice to the people? Hallelujah. Uh, I'm already... My advice to people, if you read the uh, second uh, Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, it says you should believe in the Lord your God. And ye shall be established. You should believe in the prophet and you shall prosper. First of all, you have to trust your God and know who he is. And when you come here, don't just come here to come and watch. I want you to believe in the man of God and your problem will be solved in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us put our hands together beautifully for Jesus. Yes, madam, before we let you go, we want you to demonstrate for us how you are feeling right now exercise your body and just in practical proof to see that um, your body is light as you said do those things that you were, that you cannot do freely before and let's see i can jump now hallelujah hallelujah put your hands together beautifully for jesus christ that's a practical demonstration that are past of tiredness of body pains of weakness is over and she has been as she has received healing and the strength of god almighty let us put our hands together beautifully for jesus yes madam with what god almighty has done in your life we want to encourage you that healing is not the end of itself deliverance is not the end but salvation is the goal tell your neighbor salvation is the goal that is to say you are healed to follow jesus you are blessed to follow jesus you are delivered to follow jesus so we encourage you to live your life to glorify the healer and god almighty will strengthen you to live for him in jesus name thank you and god bless you beware of fraudsters viewers all over the world it has come to our attention that some fraudsters are going around requesting for funds from people
who are too desperate and impatient to follow the right procedure in order to locate the right channel or the right source. These fraudsters parade themselves as representatives of Elohim Ministry, Wise Man Daniel Ministry, or Wise Man Daniel himself. They are fake. They are fraudsters. Please do not fall for their tricks and tactics. Below are some of the fake YouTube channels and social media handles created by these fraudsters in order to deceive you, our viewers. These are our official social media accounts and contact details. Our official YouTube channel is www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Wiseman Daniel Ministries. Our official Instagram handle is Wiseman underscore Daniel Ministries. Congratulations, viewers all over the world. We are now on Facebook and on Twitter. Our official Facebook handle is facebook.com forward slash Wiseman Daniel Official. Our official Twitter handle is twitter.com forward slash WMD Ministries. Our TikTok handle is at Wiseman Daniel Ministries. Our official website addresses are www.elohimonline.org. www.christstandard.tv Our official email addresses are info at elohimonline.org and info at christstandard.tv These are our contact details and they are all available on WhatsApp. Our prayer request line is plus 234 902 1470247 Our testimony line is plus 2349015113002 Our inquiry lines are plus 2347040945007 and plus 2349048824876 our partnership lines are plus 234-703-144-8611 and plus 234-906-141-4886. And do remember, all of these numbers are available on WhatsApp. Viewers all over the world, note that any other website addresses, social media handles or contact details apart from the ones we have listed above are not from Elohim Ministry, Wise Man Daniel Ministry, nor from Wise Man Daniel himself. God bless you. Elohim, God lives in us. John 14 verse 23.